Zimbabwe miners are performing at just a fraction of their full capacity. They are in desperate need of investment, but the multi-billion dollar World Bank projection, though encouraging, could turn out to be a pipe dream. For starters, it could be way off the mark. Nobody knows, really, uh, what the mineral potential of this country is. We know there's a lot of diamonds, a lot of platinum, a lot of methane gas and so on. Um, but we don't know how much investment it would need. The government has prioritized an exploratory survey to determine the quantum of mineral deposits in Zimbabwe. That could take years. And even after that, some of the country's policies could still scuttle investment. The Fraser Institute in Canada, which does this annual report on uh, mining industries around the world, uh, rates Zimbabwe as one of the worst five locations for investment. And um, until that changes, we're not going to see investment. And of course, indigenization, I suppose, is the major deterrent to new investment. Players in the sector are currently crying foul over high taxes and royalties, which they say threaten their viability in the face of falling global mineral prices. Previously, Zimbabwe, over many decades, for mining had a very low tax regime, 15%, and had no royalties. And that was no accident. That was because policymakers at the time understood the nature of our ore bodies, the grades of our deposits, and that mining was a key driver. Unfortunately, from the time that the government national unit came in, in particular under Tendai Beatty, these, these taxes and royalties just got increased, 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 to the point that our, there was no capacity to pay them. Even if changes were to take place and investment started to flow, Zimbabwe could face another dilemma. What to use the money for? Currently, there's a push towards mineral beneficiation, which has seen local platinum companies forced to table plans to set up a refinery locally. However, some analysts argue the country could realize greater value from scaling up output. I would have thought that the initial aim should be um, twofold. Firstly, uh, to expand mining production, but to do that, you've got to expand the availability of electricity. So that, that's probably the key constraint, along with the availability of capital. Zimbabwe's energy deficit has resulted in erratic power supplies and lengthy power outages that have proved costly to industries, not least among them the mining sector. This is a country that has not put up any new power station in over 40 years. There are plans currently underway to refurbish and upgrade existing power stations to increase the availability of electricity, but it still may not be enough to feed the mining sector so it can get to 100% capacity and that could have a significant bearing on its attractiveness to investors. Farai Mwakutuya, CCTV, Harare, Zimbabwe.